So I just got this two terabyte hard drive off a seller named Jmockin on AliExpress, and it supposedly has over 100,000 retro arcade and console games on it. And the big thing is that it's supposed to be plug and play, just ready to go. Everything pre-configured, no setting things up, no additional downloads, no having to go into your BIOS settings on your PC, nothing for you to learn, just nothing like that. Just simple, plug it into a Windows PC and run the executable. Almost sounds too good to be true, right? Well, this is a Retrobat build, which it's just a software package that essentially sets up the emulation station front end with RetroArch emulators. But this drive, it's already built for you here. Nothing else to worry about. Or is there? It's what we're here to do today. Talk about it, right? So when I do these types of videos, it's not really to hype up a product and tell you to buy it. Like, I could care less. It's to let you know what you're getting yourself into if you're looking into something like this. What are the options out there? You know, kind of help you make an informed decision. I just share my actual experiences using the product. You know, utilize that for whatever it's worth to you. You know, having someone pre-set up a build for you with nothing for you to do is very appealing for many people. Maybe you just don't have the time to make your own build. Not comfortable with downloading ROMs, setting up emulators, whatever the reason is, I get it. But usually things like this two terabyte drive are just not as awesome as they appear. Or maybe they don't quite work as well as you'd hope. So let's get into it. Now this one, it has over 70 consoles available with most of what you'd expect from the cartridge-based systems. Like all your Atari stuff, Nintendo and Sega consoles are all represented here, including handhelds, all the way up to the 3DS. Kind of interesting, right? Then you also have numerous arcade games, which actually take up close to 40% of the 100,000 game plus game list, right? Over 100,000 games, so yeah, plus, right? So like 40% are arcade games, and that might sound like a good thing, but it's not. And I'll explain why in a moment. Now you also got systems like GameCube, Nintendo Wii, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, Atari Jaguar, and you know, other numerous computer systems like MSX, Commodore 64, and Amiga, Amiga CD. Uh, you know, the one thing to keep in mind though is that this is simply a pre-built two terabyte drive and an external enclosure in case I wasn't clear about that, right? Some of these systems may rely more heavily on your computer specs, which could affect the performance that you get. But I'd really imagine most of this stuff should play fine on most people's computers if you've upgraded like within the past 10 years or so. But it definitely may vary with performance. I, I make no guarantees on anything here. You know, my PC shouldn't have any issues running any of these emulators. But regardless of specs, is this build actually plug and play? Like, I mean, if your PC is capable of running this stuff, will it just work? Like you could just start gaming, right? And well, mostly. I obviously cannot test all supposed 100,000 plus games. Yeah, I, I said supposed probably multiple times by now, and we'll get into that in a second, but I did test pretty much all of the systems that are included here. Yeah, it is a little hit and miss. Not horrible, but there are some things worth pointing out. Now, most of the, the consoles, the systems here will work just fine. Just start a game and, and go. You know, plug in a controller and you're good. The, the stuff you wouldn't expect to have problems with, like your old 8 and 16 bit stuff, NES, Genesis, Super Nintendo, um, and it appears like all your PlayStation stuff as well, you know, just works fine. No issues. Now, remember, I'm not talking about the emulator performing well. That's not what this is about. I'm saying that the games actually boot up and play. Anything that works that booted up and played, I had no issues with with performance. They just worked and they worked fine. Uh, stuff like Amiga CD worked well. Uh, even though there wasn't much I cared about there. Like Akira was interesting, but it kind of sucks. Uh, GameCube runs just fine. Dreamcast. Um, the list of stuff that works is a good number of the systems on the drive. Uh, you know, not all the systems here have complete game lists. Some things like disc-based consoles definitely don't have the full library, but there'll be a good number of games and a lot of this stuff. All your older classic stuff will be 
complete ROM list plus more. Kind of crazy, a little ridiculous. But as you move on, you start testing things out, wanting to try something you've never played before. You will, like, you know, start finding issues where things just don't run. 3DS was one of them for me. Uh, games would load, but they would stay on a black screen and just never go anywhere. Now, I haven't had time to dig into this issue yet. Like, I'm sure I could probably fix it. Um, you know, some systems I did have problems that I ran into and I, I found fixes for. But, you know, with 3DS, I just haven't figured it out yet. But plug and play, you know, am I right? That's it, plug and play. Eh, not really. Now, Naomi was uh, another one. I was kind of excited to try some of the games on it. I'm, I'm fairly familiar with Naomi, but there are some games on this list that I was curious about. But now I, I was getting error two. This game's not acceptable by main board. What the fuck does that mean? So I tried several games. They all displayed the same error. So I wondered, since I'm seeing the same games listed multiple times, maybe I'm booting the wrong version? Yeah, multiple versions inflating the ROM count isn't a new thing, and you will see this across many of the consoles on this drive. As an example, NES, it's, it's just horrible. It's not just Japanese Famicom games living together in the same list as North American NES games. It's, it's random other regions of the same game over and over. And one of the lamest things you'll see are Chinese version ROMs. So bootleg versions that have Nintendo's copyright and logos removed. Those are typically put on the cheap emulation devices and multi-carts. No clue what they're doing here. Actually, no, I, I do know why, to inflate the count. A ROM dump, if you will, right? So yeah, supposedly 100,000 plus games, but probably closer to 50,000. Still a, you know, a shit ton of games if that's accurate, but you know, some people look at it like the bigger the better, or maybe they don't even care about the plug and play nature. It's possible they just want the ROMs for other purposes. But continuing on with that trend that we got going on here, the worst offender of multiple ROMs of the same game is the main ROM set. So the arcade list of, you know, 40-ish percent of the total games on the drive, as I mentioned earlier, Holy crap, it's not even worth scrolling through. It's so hard to find games on the, the arcade list. Some games occupy multiple pages showing the same damn game endlessly. Fairly ridiculous stuff, and you know, you for sure will find bad ROMs that just don't play on these emulators with such a huge list of multi, you know, multiples, right? Wanna play Killer Instinct Arcade? Well, it didn't work, but it's listed multiple times. So let me try another version in the arcade list. Oh, it's a pirate Super Nintendo arcade version that works. Pretty freaking lame, dude. But okay, L let's go back to Naomi. I kind of got a little off track here. So a lot of these systems require a BIOS file to run properly, and that wasn't the issue with Naomi. Naomi's BIOS file, if it's required by the emulator, is located in the proper place on the drive. But the real problem, for whatever reason, was how the region was set in RetroArch. So I go in, change the default to Japan, and magically the games work as they should. Plug and play, dude. Plug it in and play around figuring out how to fix the problems of getting shit to run. So, yeah, kind of a pain in the ass, man. Not everything was an issue, but a lot of things were. You know, that just kind of annoyed me. So, you know... Overall, this hard drive, you know, it may be of some value to someone out there, especially at under $100, but that's that's a maybe considering, you know, if you just want a collection of ROMs that, you know, for some systems will have an ass load of duplicates. For those wanting a complete polished setup, uh, you know, this really isn't that great in my opinion. Uh, you may be able to clean things up with some work, reconfigure emulators that give issues, Get rid of the stupid auto collections that don't work properly, don't organize the ROMs, you know, sift through and remove endless amounts of duplicates, and you'll have a pretty solid build, but you'll also be putting in quite a bit of work. If that's worth it to you, then screw it. If you want everything handed to you and not have to learn how things work, maybe look elsewhere. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye!